Hello and welcome to On the Sunny Side, a new digital TV format by the German-speaking edition of Forbes. I'm Sunny Grenevald. I'm an entrepreneur and Forbes Under 30 list maker. And every Thursday, I meet entrepreneurs, researchers, executives, people who are driving the digital economy forward and who are using tech for good. Now, today I am tremendously honored to have Ryan Micheletti with me. He is the um, head of global operations at the Founders Institute based in Silicon Valley. And he's also the co-founder of the Vet Tech Startup Accelerator. Ryan, welcome to the show. Thank you, Sunny. It's great to be here. So for those who tune in regularly to On the Sunny Side, they know I always start with something I call Sunny's Fast Five, sort of dynamic five questions where I hope you can answer in more or less a sentence um, uh, that help our uh, viewers to get to know you a little bit better. Are you ready for that? I'm ready to go. All right. So uh, quick starter, are you a morning or a night person? Morning, for sure. And if I gave you a time machine and you could travel to any time period to any place in this world, where would you go? You know, I thought originally I thought it'd be like go back to the time of the dinosaurs. But honestly, I think I would go 100 years into the future, right? Because that's something where I would probably be able to have some impact on in the present. So instead of going someplace historical, going into the future would be probably more impactful. No Jurassic Park then. Um, in terms of your past, though, um, one thing I learned about you is that you've been serving in the military. And I was wondering, what is one of the valuable lessons, life lessons you took from that time? Probably the, the number one thing for me would be really teamwork right? And everything comes down to people and leadership and building the right team around you to accomplish really seemingly impossible missions. What is success to you? Happiness. Now, vet tech, you mentioned it is something that's um, really important. Uh, why, why is it so important to you and how are you specifically involved in it? Yeah, so I co-founded VetTech, which is a startup accelerator for military veterans. Um, this was almost a decade ago. And at the time, the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq were raging. And, and you know, we had somewhere around 200,000 military veterans uh, leaving the service every single year. And at the time, the, uh, the veteran unemployment numbers were very high. And so um, being born and raised in Silicon Valley and working kind of in the startup ecosystem, I realized that one of the best things we could do to help affect those job numbers is to create veteran-led startup companies who would then go to hire other military veterans and create this virtuous upward spiral of not only job creation, but also creating jobs of the future, right? Things that are on the, the leading edge of technology. I mean, job creation is such a big topic. Also now it's different challenges with COVID-19, but um, I'm wondering if a fo young founder, early stage founder would call you up, what kind of advice would you give him in this, in this current environment with the COVID-19 crisis? I would probably tell them that um, first, this is probably one of the greatest uh, time periods to start a technology company. Right. You know, founders go and, and spend their entire life trying to disrupt a market or an industry. And here we are. The entire market has already been disrupted for them. And so for founders that um, are smart and can move fast and, and create valuable solutions for the world, um, there's no better time to be building a company right now. And, and I think probably, you know, over the last couple decades, this, this is prime time to, to launch a startup. I mean, you've seen thousands if not tens of thousands of founders go through the Founders Institute um, which you had as a global director of operations. What is the DNA of a successful tech entrepreneur? So th there's a couple things and I could probably spend a whole hour on this subject but I'll keep it short. So the first is that um, they tend to be master of their domain Right. So they don't just come up with some idea randomly. It's like they've had years of experience that have led to some kind of insight about the, uh, an industry, a market, uh, and they're a subject matter expert in that market. The second is that they have what we call high fluid intelligence. Um, and so at the Founder Institute, every single founder that joins our program 
has to take an entrepreneur DNA assessment. And so over 50,000 people around the world have taken this, this test and we can correlate the results to successful founders. And it turns out that if you have high fluid intelligence and high openness, those are two just kind of traits uh, of someone's character that lead to success. And, and you know, to translate it to, to layman's terms, what that means is the person has to be able to adapt and think quickly and learn fast. That's what fluid intelligence essentially means. And then openness is, is really being open to new ideas, new feedback, and like not really being too attached to one thing. So if you're smart, if you're adaptable, and you're open to new ideas and concepts, you're able to learn and iterate very quickly, which is you know, really the startup's greatest strength. Is there a way to train that muscle that you sort of just outlined? To a certain extent, yes. Um, you know, it's, it's much harder to train as you get older. In fact, like fluid intelligence, um, a, lot, a lot of people argue that you cannot train. One of the, the biggest sort of um, success factors, I would say, though, that you can train is, is what we call your adversity muscle. So as most people know, you know, starting a company is probably one of the hardest things a person can do. And so for founders that have that tenacity and they're, they're able to, to kind of take on big challenges and overcome them, um, having that ability to to really adapt um, and and uh, really sort of rise to the occasion um, of of you know working a, a sixty hour long week, um, constantly dealing with fires and problems that that arise, that's very important for them to uh, to practice and do. And and that's actually one of the things that we found military veterans were very good at. Um, so it turns out that, you know, the founders that, you know, stick with their, uh, their company and, and are able to, you know, accomplish, you know, various milestones and complete tasks and never give up, those are the ones that are successful. And so, you know, looking at all of the different founders, you know, across the network, it turns out that, you know, the number one cause of failure for a founder is when the founder simply gives up. It's not that they run out of money. It's not that they run out of time or, or you know, their co-founder quits. It's literally when the person with the passion and that spark stops working on the concept. And so if you, if you can find a person that is very tenacious and will never give up, you know no matter what, you, you know, the direction that they're heading in, they'll eventually get to where they want to go and build that company, assuming that it's a good company to, to be building to begin with. I mean, I think one thing that really resonated, which you said earlier in this conversation, was it's all about team. That was one of the, the key pieces of, uh, that you learned also from your time in the military. When it comes to the Founders Institute, I think one thing that's just amazing is, is the tens of thousands of mentors that you can access if, you're, if you go through a Founders Institute program. Now, what are, what are things to look out for when you pick um, a mentor and, and how should entrepreneurs approach that? Yeah. So, you know, for early stage founders, mentors can can mean a variety of things. But what we teach is that there's sort of different archetypes around a mentor. So the most important thing is they have to be sort of a culture fit, right? There has to be this kind of spark between the two people and they have to kind of get along. That doesn't mean that they have to agree, but they have to have this kind of like common bond and, and understanding. Um, the second is that you sort of have your business advisors and your technical advisors um, and really, at the end of the day, um, it comes down to selecting someone that can help you uh, move the business forward. So that could be making introductions to potential customers. That could be helping you know spec out your your product roadmap and, and you know future iterations of your product. So there's a lot of like kind of different high level um, action items that these advisors can take. But really, like they'll fall into either like business advisors or technical advisors. Now, in terms of making a business succeed, one thing that Silicon Valley is known for is, is the fundraising landscape that is easier in Silicon Valley than other places. How have you seen um, fundraising change over COVID-19 and, and how, should, how should one fundraise nowadays? That's, that's a really good question. So um, the advice that we're giving founders is that they have to be building something that's relevant for the post-COVID world. Right. And even in industries that have been completely disrupted, like travel, for instance, like there's still relevant solutions that could be built for what the world will look like after COVID-19. And so we have a saying that every company is now a, a you know, post-COVID-19 company. But if you don't if you don't integrate that into your narrative, 
then people just aren't going to get it. They're not going to see the vision. They're not going to really understand like how, how your company fits into the world. And so it's really important that you're, you're addressing that and you're kind of taking a leadership position as to what will the world look like, you know, once, you know, COVID-19 kind of subsides. And so there's still a lot of investment activity happening, not just in Silicon Valley, but across the world. Um, we, we're tend, we tend to see that um, a lot of the investments are happening in, in industries that are very relevant for, uh, for the post-COVID world, such as like health tech and even like education, um, with, with things that are going on. In fact, an FI alumni, you know, about a month ago raised about $30 million. Um, and so uh, they're doing a health tech startup. And so there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of activity, but you have to tie it to, you know, how are you solving, you know, the, the problems that will arise in the post COVID era. Founders Institute is active in over 200 cities among them also many in Europe and the US. What is it that Silicon Valley can learn from Europe? And what can Europe learn from Silicon Valley in your experience? Europe can learn from Silicon Valley that um, you need big, you need to access big markets, right? And one of the challenges with Europe is that there's so much like cultural diversity, so many different countries and regions and rules and regulations that it can become hard to scale in that region. Right. And so, you know, I know that things with like the European Union are, are trying to address that, um, which is important, but it really comes down to like if, you know, the whole venture model is, is based upon growth. Right. And so you sort of need a big field to, to grow in, so to speak. And so you need to really as you as you start your company, you need to think about how you're a cross border company. Right. And how can you how can you expand um, in a scalable way across Europe and across multiple countries? Um, the thing that I think Silicon Valley can learn from Europe is probably, you know, there's, there's sort of like a, um, I would almost call it like a, a toxic culture when it comes to that growth mindset, where people, you know, you see this with like some of the unicorns that have come out recently, WeWork and all that catastrophe, but like, you know, there's been this mentality of growth at all costs, right? Um, because again, that's sort of the, the, the entire framework that the venture industry is built upon is growth. Um, and I think to a certain extent, right, like, you know, growth isn't everything. And what I'm seeing more and more of is like integrating impact into the, the startup company's framework. And uh, one thing that we're doing at Founder Institute is, is integrating these uh, 17 UN SDGs into the fabric of a company's formation. So we believe that in the future, every company is going to be an impact company. Now, my, you know, that doesn't mean they're a nonprofit. It doesn't mean that they're, they're working on something that's, you know, not, not a real solution. What that means is that, you know, you have a greater vision of how your company is going to positively impact humanity. And if we can, if, you know, we create somewhere around a thousand companies every single year. And if every startup company that gets created has impact at the forefront of, okay, we're going to measure our impact based upon a certain criteria. Here's what our vision is to, to help make the world better and give back then, you know, 10 years from now, when we've created 10,000 companies, right, you can see how that's going to become, you know, the norm of the startup community. And really, like, these are going to be the leaders and the people that, that help forge a better future, not just for people in, in Silicon Valley and in the U.S., but all across the world. And I think that's, that's absolutely amazing. Um, is there a particular organization, startup initiative or cause that you would want to give a shout out um, so my viewers uh, hear about it and I'd make sure to link it in the YouTube description below as well. Is there anything that comes to mind? Absolutely. So I'd like to give a big shout out to the Veteran Business Project. Um, these are some good friends who've been, you know, doing really, really great work in the veteran community for many years. Um, and what they do is they basically match make uh, veteran businesses who, you know, maybe are looking to sell their business or retire because, you know, they're sort of like the Vietnam era veterans that are looking to kind of get out of entrepreneurship. And they match make them with young up and coming veteran entrepreneurs who are looking to acquire businesses. And so it's a really interesting model where because they have that common bond with each other, um, that they're, they're able to facilitate a really positive business uh, relationship. And so they're doing really great work there. Um, and also, in, you know, because a lot of people in, in your viewership are, are German, um, we're going to be expanding our veteran founder initiative to Europe. Um, so right now at the Founder Institute, we have something called the, the Veteran Founder Initiative. And it's basically a series of scholarships that enable veterans to take the program uh, for free. 
And so we have a couple partners in Germany and also in the UK um, who are going to be helping partner with us to, to proliferate these, these uh, scholarships so, so that, you know, veterans in Europe can actually take the program for free um, in the various cities that they operate in. So we have one in Frankfurt right now. We have one in the, in, uh, the London program. And so, you know, over the next year or so, we'll be expanding this to other cities in Europe to really like uh, help veterans build the next generation of uh, startup companies across Europe. I, mean, I think those are absolutely amazing initiatives and I'll make sure to link to both of them. In closing, when you look back to your military time, what is the leadership lesson that you've taken um, that you believe tech entrepreneurs need to understand as well? I think the, the number one leadership lesson that I learned was that the mission comes first, but you take care of your team always, right? So there's the saying mission first, team always. And what that means is like, you know, you're here for a purpose. You're here to accomplish something, right? And you need to put that in the forefront of everything that you do, right? But it's important that you take care of people along the way. It's not one or the other, it's both, but you do have to prioritize the mission, right? And so as a startup founder, your job is basically to inspire people around you to see your vision and help you bring it to life, right? And um, as you know, that's a really difficult task to, to complete, right? There's a lot of factors that you need to consider. And so if you build the right team around you, if you can inspire them and motivate them to, to come along with that journey, then you're going to not only accomplish the mission much faster and more efficiently, but it's also going to have a much greater impact on your company culture. Mission first, team always. What a beautiful and powerful motto to leave us with. Thank you so much, Ryan, for joining on the sunny side. It's such a pleasure to have this conversation. Thanks, Sunny. Pleasure was mine anytime. So here on the sunny side, um, we'll be taking a break, hopefully a sunny one, going on vacation um, for a few weeks and coming back out of summer break on September 10th. So hope you enjoy the summertime. Have a great vacation if you are um, planning on taking one. And see you very soon in September on the sunny side.